Hi, this is Iris and I'm at the Polyform Design Center and today we're going to be making an eraser out of amazing eraser clay. It's fun to do and it's a great project for kids to do with adults. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is that the eraser we are going to make definitely works. Here's a little flower I just drew. And wow, I think that that leaf is just a little bit too thin. So I'm going to use the eraser that I just created to erase. And it really works. What we're going to be using today is the eraser clay, a super slicer. Now you're going to want to use this with an adult. The adult might want to do the slicing depending on your age. And we also are going to be using an acrylic roller. What we're going to create today is a cane. And the cane has the design all the way through it. I'm going to cut off slices and the slices are going to be the erasers. The first thing that we're going to do is unwrap the orange, purple, yellow, and blue eraser clays. And we're going to create a nice little coil of blue. And how you do that is just going to take the clay and soften it in your hands and roll it. And then we're going to roll it right here on our clay mat. You want to make sure that the area you're working in is covered and protected because clay has a residue can, that can stain furniture. We're just going to make a small little coil. I'm going to put that aside for now. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to roll out some clay with our acrylic roller. And the color clay that we're going to be doing first is purple. And I'm just going to take about two-thirds of a bar and I'm going to soften it in my hands. This softening is called conditioning and it gets all of the ingredients of the clay mixed together. And once I have it mixed, I'm going to flatten it out. It's like a little pancake. And when I say to roll out some clay, this is what I mean into a sheet. I'm just going to use the acrylic roller. And you're going to use a technique just like you would for making a pie crust. I keep picking it up and rolling it thinner. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I have my purple clay rolled out. I'm going to set that aside for now also. Now I'm going to take about one-third of the yellow bar of clay and I'm going to soften it in my hands and condition it. And then I'm going to roll it into a log. First I make it into a bowl because that kind of smooths out all the clay. And then I'm going to roll it into a log. Just like that. I want you to understand that none of this needs to be exactly the size I'm making. And if there's a little variation in the log, that's okay too. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our purple sheet of clay and we're going to cut a nice straight edge on it. And next we're going to take our log of clay, our yellow log. really has a fancy name but I refer to it as yellow. And I'm going to trim so the purple layer is even with the yellow layer. Now I usually lift this up and just to make sure that the purple sheet is adhered to the yellow. Then I lay it down and I roll it. And I roll it just past where this edge is. And if you look carefully, there's a little line that's created. I take my super slicer and I cut 
right before that line. And then I roll up the entire log. And you'll notice there's a little separation there. And all I have to do is pinch it and smooth it down. You don't want the clay to overlap. You want it to just meet. Okay, and then I'm just smoothing this down a little bit. And now I'm going to take the yellow wrapped with purple and I'm going to wrap it in orange. I cut the edge of the orange just like I did the purple. Now lay the log on here. Trim the sides. Okay, do the very same thing. I'm going to roll it just until it touches. It makes a little mark. Hoping you can see that. If not, believe me, it's there. Trim it. And then this time it's even a little more separated and I just pinch it together with my fingers. This is a perfect time for me to mention that it's a good idea to have some baby wipes because you'll want to clean your hands between colors. I noticed that because I have a little yellow clay on my hands. And so we always suggest to use baby wipes for cleanup. Okay, you have your log now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this log a lot smaller and we're going to make it shaped like little petals. And you're going to want to start in the center of the log and you're going to want to press it out slightly. Just like this. And once you get it going, this clay is nice and smooth. Once you get it going, you're just going to be able to roll it like this. You want to roll to the outside. Okay, now once again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I, you'll notice a little thicker here than here. If you want, you could squeeze it together so it's all about the same. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this round log and we want to make it into a petal shape. And the way I do that is I just go all along one of the edges and I pinch it. And I have one here that's already done. And once I have it all pinched, I'm going to want to smooth it out a little bit. And I also want to try and make the top edge look rounded. So when I take a cut of it, it looks just like a petal. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tiny thin blue log that we made at the beginning and we're going to cut I would say probably six or seven lengths about the same size. Just go all along and you'll notice every time I make a cut you have that same petal shape. Okay, I have all my petal logs cut out already. And what I've done is I've started to put them around the thin blue coil, just like this. Now, it might take six to go around. You might use seven. I think mine is going to use seven. Okay, and this is what it's going to look like. Now, once we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to roll it a little bit and spread it out just a tiny bit. We want to make sure that all the air holes that are in the center here are closed up. And we're just going to do this slightly. Just put a little pressure on it. Do it slightly. Now, 
if you'd like your flower to have a little bit more orange around the outside, or purple for that matter, what you're going to do is take another sheet of clay, and same as we did before, you're going to cut the edge, place your log right here, And just like before, we're going to roll it until we get that little mark. We're going to cut it. And we're going to make sure that it meets. Great. Just roll this up. Now, what we're going to have to do is slice our log into pieces in order to make these shapes for our erasers. It's best if you let the log sit for an hour or so. So why don't you clean up your hands and go have some chocolate chip cookies and when you get back you'll be able to slice up your log. At this time you want to preheat your oven to 250 degrees. You want to use an oven thermometer to make sure that the temperature is at 250 and not higher than that. The reason is, in order for the eraser to work, it has to be baked at 250 degrees. Once you have your oven preheated, it's time to slice your log. What I usually do is I just put it down and I use the super slicer and I gently roll it like this to make a nice even slice. And there you go. You have your eraser. All you have to do is make your slices, put them on a baking sheet, and bake them for 10 minutes. And when they're done, you'll have your own erasers.